Well, what happened? I graduated in 68 from college. And I just, you know, like everyone else, I mean, I didn't know that I was supposed to do anything after college. I was completely unprepared. I'd been an English major, so I had no skills, really. I could just read. And, and plus, you know, it was the 60s, so I had somehow imagined by the time I graduated that, uh, you know, the whole country was going to be rice paddies, so that was going to solve my career problems. Well, that didn't happen, so, so I applied to graduate school, and, and somehow I think they persuaded me to stay at Harvard. And it was just a nightmare from start to finish. It was just, I just knew the second I was there that I didn't want to be there. I mean, the story that always seems to me to kind of sum it up for me was, uh, was I had this, I was in medieval literature, actually. Uh, I can't remember quite why, but anyway, I was in medieval literature. And uh, because it seems sort of, because it, I think because it seems sort of scientific in a certain way to me. You know, you actually had to know something. You had to know these, you know, you had to know Anglo-Saxon and Old French and so forth. And, and so much of what I'd already noticed around me was, was kind of bogus, that I thought, well, this is at least it's kind of like a science. So, um, so I was taking Chaucer from this uh, elderly sadist. And, um, and because of, it was medieval literature, there were all these uh, nuns and monks or priests. Or, you know, I mean, they show up in these medieval lit departments. And, so there were all these nuns in the class. And, um, and the way the class went was we would go around and translate while we were sitting there, which was also, now, now that I look back, I mean, it's never occurred to me before, like, what a waste of time. You know, you read some Chaucer and you can pretty much translate Chaucer, you can do it at home, you know, so why we're sitting there doing it. But anyway, um, every time we got to a really filthy part, he would make one of the nuns do it, you know, and I was just, ugh. And I thought, great, this is what I'm doing, you know, I'm sitting here doing all this work so I can sit at his end of the table and do, you know, I mean, I wasn't going to do what he was doing, but the, you know, some sort of more compassion equivalent of what he was doing. And, and finally, I mean, it just got so bad that I would, um, oh, and I, would, I had to take German at 8 o'clock every morning because I didn't have enough languages. So I would go to German class at 8 in the morning and then I'd come home and turn on the TV. I'd get back into bed, I'd turn on the TV. I, you know, and then I was taking a couple of seminars. I'd wake up I'd go to the seminars, I'd come, and also because I hated the way they were talking about literature, you know, and I was all, you know, such a passionate reader, and I cared about it so much, and I just despised what was around me. I would sit there, and I was sort of, you know, singing songs in my head, and, um, you know, obviously unresponsive, I couldn't have been, I could have just been like a catatonic, I mean, I was catatonic, and then, I, and then I would go home and turn the TV on again, and, you know, watch the late talk shows, and I'd just do the same thing day after day after day, and, and I was married at the time. It was my first marriage, a very brief marriage. And, and my husband noticed that I was getting more and more insane. And, uh, and he finally, he was a mathematician. And he had a, like a math fellowship. And, and I said, I've got to get out of here. And, and it turned out that he could take his math fellowship anywhere, just anywhere, you know, any math institute in the world. So, and, and he had this list of math institutes. And I looked at it and I said, oh, let's go to Bombay. So, you know, I knew that it, <laughs> I was like, I, the only thing that was guiding me is it was, it was as far from Cambridge, Massachusetts as I could possibly get. So we went to Bombay, and I came back cured. I mean, it was like a miracle cure, you know. I went to Bombay and got cured. I started writing my first novel while I was there. And, and then I was still, I guess, theoretically in graduate school. I mean, I, you know, I was sort of like hemorrhaging credits. I mean, I wasn't getting any. I was just losing credits, but somehow they thought, you know, at the end of the year that I was going to get this MA, I guess. So they said, okay, you need to teach. Um, and I was working on a novel by then. And at that point, no one wanted to teach the writing classes because it wasn't good for your resume and, you know, they were all on your career track. So, so they said, okay, you know, you're, you're flunking out, obviously, and you're underperforming, but, um, but we'll let you stick around to teach a writing class. So that's what I did. So I stayed there, you know. I taught a writing class. It gave me enough time, you know, and a little bit of money to finish my first novel. And by the end of that year, I guess my first novel had been accepted. So I was out of it.